Hey, what's right? up, everybody? Welcome to another Swazcast. We're here in the Matt Cave, and we're with Matt Man from the Secret Identity Podcast. How's everybody doing? And I'm your host, John. I'm your other host, <laughs> the other guy. Now, this is a, a, a special Swazcast near and dear to my heart because we're going to talk about some things that are kind of, that we've been collecting. We're, me and him are two, some of the big, most craziest type collectors, uh, I would if say. If you stopped at crazy... I think everybody would probably agree. <laughs> yeah. I have to say one thing, though. You and I are exactly alike, and for some reason, we connect. We, we have the biggest, I don't want to say egos, but we're, we're kind of, we have lead singer syndrome. We both do, yet it uh, we have such works. Par- yeah, and we have it such works. parallels in the way we did. If you look at our histories, we may have not done the exact same thing, but how we handle all those situations, we did it the exact same way. The same things that I relive in therapy every week, you're doing the same thing, but they have different names. Unbelievable. And and that's why people who know the Secret Identity Podcast and know the Swatscast needs to understand. This is a, this is an essential piece of the puzzle because you're going to have to understand what we do and why we like it. So we're going to have a couple of things here that we're going to show you why we did what we did with it and why we love it. Yeah. Okay. So, Matt, man, why don't you start it off with one of your things? This is, I had to bring this one out by popular demand. Absolutely. When popular I, request. When I first met him, this is one of the first <laughs> things he showed us, and I knew, I just knew what it was all about. So what had happened was in about 1980 or so, so I was about 12 years old, my dad, I went to a flea market with my dad, and they had an Avengers number no. 4, which is the first modern day appearance of Captain America. From 1964. And you can smell it. Mm. Wow. Wow, smell the old folks that touch that thing. It smells like childhood. So I went up and I'm like, oh, how much for that? 25 bucks. Now, 25 bucks back in 1980 was like a billion now. Yeah. So I was all sad and I gave my dad the sad eyes and he said, you know what? If you can come up with $10, I'll pay the other 15 And I'm like, in a week. And I said, deal. Oh, in a week. I thought you had to go panhandle around. Well, the- <laughs> I might as well have because what I did was I, I said, oh, can I have my lunch money? And didn't eat. I saved my lunch money. I went around and found money anywhere I could. I'm in the dryers. I'm all over the place trying to find stuff. So I went and got it. Now, the reason it was so cheap is that this book is not in the greatest shape. However, I just want to own this book. That's all I want to say is that I have That's it. what I love about you, Matt, because if you see a lot of his comics, some of them are in the most pristine condition, but it's the fact that he just has it and yeah. just wants to have it. It doesn't matter. And, and sometimes these comics actually look better when they're beaten up and they're red and they're used because you know somebody enjoyed them. But, like, I, I don't know. It just gives it a, a, a new flavor. It gives it life. So the, so the interesting thing was there's a huge chunk missing out of the corner, which would make, if this was, uh, if you, you went in the rating system, probably because of the age, it's probably a, a good. I mean, I would give it a good or a fair. I mean, it's not, <laughs> it's not a, a horror show. But what right, I, yeah. but I was so like looking at this and distracted by the cover, I went out and got the old paper and pen and pencils. As if you can see here, if you look it up, see it was ripped off right here. So what I did was, <laughs> I just finished Jack Kirby's work for him. Yeah. And so it's actually his drawing of Mjolnir and Thor's foot. And I think it is better than how Jack Kirby did it. And the best part about it is. I did nothing to match the paper. <laughs> I did not even try to blend the red to make it look good. But I did a pretty good job with the hand. <laughs> the cities in the back. I drew the cities. I drew cities. I drew, you know, on those skyscrapers, whatever that line is that goes on the top. I don't know what they use that for. That's not a functioning part of a building. No, but no, I drew it would that. be great. It is Chick Stone's, uh, ch- this is <laughs> Chick Stone's uh, ink, inking, I can tell. Uh, is he still alive? Because you know it would be hilarious if you could actually get him. <laughs> you go up to Chick Stone, like, can you ink this? He'd be like, what the hell's that? Or I could go to Joe Caramagna and say, could you re-letter <laughs> yeah. the parts that all got faded for me, please? Because I really yeah, need this. It would be actual stuff. Marvel, because, you, you know, you think yeah. he's a... And one of the funny things, too, is that back in the old days, too, you used to get a book with a stamp on it. It would have a date or something like that. This has a stamp right across with D10. I don't know what that is. That's a it was like uh, it was a battleship thing yeah, or something. No, it, it was in it, it was uh, the the newsstands that they would uh, have the date. Like I, I guess it was the time that it, if I'm right, the time that it came. I don't know. I, I, D I, for day. <laughs> T for ten. Ten for ten. Think, wasn't that December? No, because no, March. Mar- well, no, December, January, February, March. Three. Yeah, so about a been, three month. Live. So that's yeah, so that's when that's when it probably came in. Yeah. And, and this was probably the top at the top of the because they would come in the bulk yep. with, the, with, the, the, top, with the, the tape yeah, around yeah. them, and the that was probably the, the actual top top comic. But what? But once again, this comic is Matt. Like <laughs> it's like it's me. It just shows when I saw that it was just like I get it. 
Yeah, I get it. And you and I, too. This is another thing we always joke about, and then I'll let you get to your cool thing, because that's awesome. I'll let you. Like, like I've got any say in this. Thank you. Thank you know, you. when I'm done talking, you can talk about your thing. Um, about the drawing thing, I was telling you one time, I was sharing you a dark secret of my past, where I used to cut out and make my own hockey cards and put them in the cards, and I played for the Pittsburgh Penguins, and I would get a picture of me playing hockey and glue it in there. So, of course, the card's like 18 inches thick, and I'd put my stats on the back. And I wasn't, I wasn't like, I, I wasn't like overly crazy with my stats. I was a realist. I wasn't scoring 80 goals a season. It was like 35, 40 <laughs> consistently, 70 assists, you know. So I was about a 110 point guy every year. And I was so embarrassed by all that. We were talking about it, and then you turned around laughing. You're not laughing at me, are you? I'm laughing with you. Yeah, go ahead. Because I also, I wasn't a hockey guy, but John Cimino was also a baseball player. You were. Rookie of the year, in fact. Were you? <laughs> 1984. 1984. No, four. Yeah. And, uh, yes, I was 1984 Rookie of the Year. But what I used to do is I used to actually copy the actual cards, and then I would draw John Cimino, who had long hair. <laughs> long, for some reason, because at that time, headbanging was in, you yep, know, like, yep. And I just wanted to be like Paul Stanley or Gene Simmons. There you go. And I didn't have the right hair for it, but for some reason, John Tamino, who played, started with the Oakland A's. He was a third batch brother. You were the brother. first third batch brother. <laughs> third batch brothers. And then I went to uh, the Mets, and then I retired with the Royals. Excuse me. I went to the Royals, and then I went to the Mets. And always, I, I See, John Tamino got back problems and stuff, so I got injured a few years here and there. But I remember in 1980... Uh, it was 1986 or 1985. 1985, I hit 44 home runs, and I led the league. Jesse Barfield came in second at and 40. And he was with Toronto, right? Yeah, and he yep. hit 40. He hit 40. So, uh, But the thing is, is, I totally understood what he did. And it's like, he's laughing at me, like, look what I do. And it's like, oh, I do that too. And then it just kept going. And <laughs> but go there were so many things that were parallels. We, we kept just peeling back that onion. Like, he has his, his room and stuff. I had my room too, and I had over... Well, I think it was over 5,000 pieces of, like, all the comics and all that stuff. It's just... But the, the other thing that you do that I used to do, you collect what you like. You don't have entire runs. You yep. just get the comic or an appearance of something that you like, and that's thrown in there. I did that, too. I, I have no idea why, because if it had something, and then I would have all the sections and all that stuff. So when people would go through, like, oh, why do you have this one and this one? And then you're missing, like, yeah. 50... And then you have one. Because I just got, like, the appearances of... Like stuff. Marvel Team-Ups and Marvel Tales. I only have three of them because those are the ones that Cap were in. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to read Spider-Man and the Guardians of the Galaxy. See, and that's the brilliance of this man. <laughs> Thing and Thor. What am I going to do with Thing and Thor? <laughs> and, like, what kind of dynamic is that? That's terrible. Terrible, terrible. That's almost like Matt Man and Brian, no? The, oh, that works. Somehow that works. Somehow. So, okay, Reed Richards <laughs> and uh, Ben Grimm. Yeah, that's oh, about that's it. Good. Me and Keith is like... I would say, uh, like, Zandor and, and Galipo Glue. Because, one, he looks like them, but I, I, if I don't lead it out of here, he's going to get, 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 get the wrong way. <laughs> but, <laughs> okay, but I got something here that is unbelievable. This and, is. And I got it by such a chance meeting. Like, it, the, the stars were in line. God gave me this thing. I don't know how it happened, but somehow I got it. And what I'm going to show you today, and it, it makes this extra special. What I have here is a is a toy that ranges within uh, my, the price guide actually says for the Marvel Silver Age stuff that it, it's actually priceless but it could sell between five and ten thousand dollars or even more now there are only three of them in existence and the reason why this probably can't command more or maybe that's what we're gonna put out here so people will know about it not a lot of people know about this they know about the costumes and mm -hmm. stuff but they don't know about this in 1963, Marvel, uh, uh, excuse me, in the, in the early 60s, Ben Cooper had a costume called Spider-Man. Now, it was a different Spider-Man and stuff, so I think the, it was black, it was just, it was just a weird thing, but they, when Spider-Man came out, and he was, uh, his first appearance was in 62, and then the series started Amazing in 16, Fantasy 15? Yep. Mm -hmm. and, then the, and then the series started in uh, March, I think, of 1963, uh, uh, if I'm correct. That could be when he tried to join the Fantastic Four. Yeah, tried to join the Fantastic Four. I think what Ben Cooper did is that they saw that there was another Spider-Man out there that maybe kids were gravitating to, and they, they got the license for this. But what this actually turned out to be was the very first licensed product Marvel ever did. And what I have right here... <laughs> is the actual 
Spider-Man 1963 Ben Cooper costume. There's three of these in existence. That's it. And uh, this is actually verified because on the costume itself it says 1963. And this box design right here was only used in 1963. And as you can tell, there's a date on there that says 1963. And this was actually sold at Sears for a buck ninety-nine, which is pretty good. We're back in '63, but what this is actually so important is, once again, it's the very first Marvel licensed product ever done. Mm. And the next product that came out after this was the Mar Mary Marvel Marching Society, which came out a year later. So Spider-Man was actually on issue number five, I think, because it came out in September is when the costume starts hitting the, the racks, and nobody probably even knew who Spider-Man mm. was, and like. That's what makes it so fascinating that that they would take Spider-Man because by chance, but like, and use the license. And it's funny because I've talked to other collectors and stuff. They never even knew it existed. They're like, "What is that?" And then they didn't do Spider-Man in '64. He came out and then they did '65 because I don't know if it sold well or not. But how many kids do you think actually even knew about Spider-Man? I mean, it was selling yeah. in the comics, but it was such a there was nothing on TV it about it. It would be him. the last costume in the pile when you when you went like to yeah, the for Halloween. Been. They might have thought like, oh, that's cool. Or maybe some kids would be like, oh, I want to get the Spider-Man one. I remember that comic. But come on, Spider-Man was on number five. So this is such an amazing piece of Marvel history that should actually be in a museum. But you're enjoying this with Matt Man and John. Maybe, I'm enjoying the dust. <laughs> maybe the two most crazed people. <laughs> but with with actually some of the most... I mean, this is one of the most greatest pieces of Marvel history in collectibles that you can get. So, uh, all the Spider-Man collectors out there, I got it. Not you. Not you. And the cool thing, the thing I, other than the fact that the costume just looks great, you got, like, the bumps and everything in there, yeah. which is really cool. It's just the packaging. That is so 60s. And, <laughs> and it's right funny right. because when you even... Nowadays, when you get the pack of cigarettes and it says, you know, this could kill you, you have warnings on top of this box. Why don't you read a couple of these warnings? Well, uh, yeah, flame retardant. So you could light yourself on fire and you're fine. Those of you who know, uh, we did a podcast before on the Ben Cooper cost, and we had Keith, who couldn't really read that well, but he read the... He read, he read the, co but yeah, but in the, in 1963, Ben Cooper costumes put safety first. I mean, come on, costumes are flame retardant in addition to meeting U.S. flammability laws, which I don't, what, do they, we have laws about, it's, it's you, in the 60s, they were smoking dope, man. Man. Masks are made of flame-proof virgin vinyl, sanitary and washable, because at this time, in the, <laughs> at this time, <laughs> I just picture the kid that falls off the guy's porch after he gets his nutty boy bar. Falls off face first, and he's got to go home and clean the costume. <laughs> you can because the the sixties ones they were vinyl. I mean, that I mean later on they became like that hard that, plastic yeah. vinyl. These are like these are you can see right here they were like a cloth, and they're great for your peripheral vision. You can <laughs> see that you can see the car coming before it hits you. And masks are well ventilated with extra large eye holes. <laughs> and ready, color bright, color hyphen bright for day and night. I mean, but seriously. This is a piece of Marvel history. This is. And, you know, I, I, I'm just... When I actually have this in my house, I, I tear it up because I, I, I was actually going to... I purchased it to make a quick buck on turnaround, make a couple grand, but then I had it and I was like, what am I doing? No way. Now I'm see, keeping it. Now, see, what I did was I went over to, like, the dollar store about five years ago. One dollar. One dollar. One dollar. It's about the same thing. It's that you can't see. It's sharp and it cuts your face. You get this little, you know, for an asthmatic kid like me, you get this little breathing hole, which, I mean, that's normally how I feel like I'm breathing anyway. This just now cuts it in third. Keith, and there you go. Keith said it best on our, uh, our Ben Cooper podcast. When you would go to the house, you'd be all in your costume. But it was always like, just before you get to the house, trick or treat, <laughs> take your candy. And you're like, this is for the rest of the night. Next house, trick or treat. <laughs> or you get every single kid, and I know Keith did this and he's going to deny it, you try sticking your tongue through here, oh, how far you can go, and then when you try to pull it back, you've ripped half the layer of skin off. And by the time you get home, you get those canker sores. Yeah. You have those canker sores at the tip of your and tongue. And how do you take care of the canker sore? By trying to cut it off with the sharpness of the mouth part. <laughs> there you go. And yeah, but Halloween fun. And that's and this is so. This is a little once again a little insight into the whole history of Batman and uh, John. Because if you were ever maybe too afraid to ask <laughs> or didn't care to ask. This shows you what we're about. And there's one other thing that we're so in dire uh, 
cuckoo about that we can do and we can uh, say, what's the band that we love and we just happen to like be obsessed with them and oh that would be Kiss that would be Kiss and that was another costume I mean I remember getting Pat, made Pat, up and going out and then having like my Ace Freely makeup and then as I'm getting ready with my pumpkin to go out there and my uh, uh, we see these um, uh, pillowcases because you get more candy in there yeah, yeah. all of a sudden my mom's like don't forget your coat are you kidding me <laughs> I gotta wear my coat with this costume. No way. Yeah, and, and you know what's funny about that? I actually, me and a friend of mine, we went to school in the makeup. We just one day, just randomly, it was not even October. I think it was like maybe in like March <laughs> or something. We come walking into school. I got Paul Stanley makeup all over my face, and my friend has Gene Simmons. And they're like, "What are you doing?" And I was like, "They actually sent us home, and we had to wash our face." Nice. But we obviously they sent us home for the day. They're like, "You can't do it." You why it didn't, didn't affect your learning. <laughs> but why did I thinking about that? It's like you were like the first goth kid. <laughs> just like I just wanted to wear. What it. grade? What grade was that? Uh, fourth, fourth, so, no, fifth yeah. grade. Fifth grade. Yeah, it was so girls it was are elementary not school. Quite wearing school. makeup yet, so you couldn't turn around and, and use that card. Going, little Susie over here has got more makeup on than I do. We just went into school that day, awesome. and I just want to tell you one more little history of me. We used to have this thing called Spark back in uh, elementary school. And what it was is that it was like 20 or 10 minutes that anybody could read whatever they wanted to read. I, what did I bring in? The, probably the, the album of uh, no, 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 Love no, no, Gun and no, started no, reading no, the lyrics no, no, to no, it. No, no, no. What do you think I would bring in if we were supposed to read books? Oh, yeah, you're bringing in a comic book. A uh, comic book. I remember it's uh, Hulk, uh, Iron Man 131, too, the one uh, uh, Hulk vs. Iron Man. And uh, he actually knocks the Hulk out. Uh, but anyways... I bring that in, and I remember the teacher going to me saying, "Like, what do you got there?" And I was like, "Oh, I got a comic book." She's like, "No, you need to read. You need to read a real book." And I was like, "This is a real book. It's got staples. It's got words. It's just got pages." And she's like, "No, you got to read a, like a book like that." And I said, oh, "Oh, that." And she and she goes to me, "Well, if you can prove to me that this is a real reading thing, I'll let you read it." So that was on a Friday. So basically, that weekend, good thing you had the weekend to figure this one out. And I did figure it out. You know what I did? John Cimino went to the guns with this stuff. He, I made a poster, and I made literally there was maybe about a hundred. A jo it was George Perez like, like literally hundreds of superheroes on it. It had all DC and all Marvel and all this stuff. And I put that up there, and I brought in a stack of comic books. I don't, I, I can't remember which ones, but you know the Hulks and all that that I had, Spider-Man. But I brought in a stack and. So I came to the class, I set up my little poster thing. Now, I didn't have to do this, but th figure me, I didn't do a project all year long, failing, <laughs> failing math, failing science, but I come in with this beautiful drawn poster and a stack of comics, and I, and I was started reading the intros and all that. And basically what happened is after reading three comics, I raised my. I let the kids raise their hand. Who thinks this is real reading? And you know what happened? It's like a movie from Rudy or something. And all the kids, even the girls, rose their hand. And she, the teacher, said that was a great thing. Great. Now I didn't. I probably passed her class still with a D minus and stuff. But you know what she let us do? She let kids bring re, uh, reading materials. And I swear to you, not Joe in the back, and I think Jeff in the front. Brought in comic books. There you go. And we they let comic books go by. That was a great triumph that nobody will ever know about, but I always will have that in my heart. I mean, I don't know if that's quite up there with the Civil Rights March, but that's <laughs> not bad. That's not bad. I swear to you, I got I got comics read at my element and probably <laughs> I don't know, it was awesome. But no, it was what I used to do great moment. was when we you know you used to have to bring in your um your uh, current events and <laughs> cut it out and stand there in front of the high class. My current event is about how the Soviet Union has invaded Afghanistan. And you go in there. I used to bring in Weekly World News. And this is where I think I worked on my acting and my comedic chops. Because I would go in there and do it straight. I'd be like, I can't believe this. In Wisconsin, they found Bat Boy. They found a kid who was raised by bats who lived in a cave. And I would be reading this thing. That picture. And, <laughs> right, right, and the yeah. kids would be in tears. And I'm sitting there, and I'm going straight face. And I'm telling Mrs. Contois who I ran into about a year ago at our local Blockbuster, and she walked up to me and she goes, "You, the last time I saw you, which was probably 30 years ago, she goes, you were into comic books, Star Wars, and the Beatles. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 30 years ago, yeah, right? Nothing I, still, I remember Miss Vincent seeing me in the back of a car, and she looked at me, John, I want to see a camera next to you in 30 years to see what you become. <laughs> and she nice. said to me, and so a few years after that, I'm on the back of a truck, and I see her walk, and she goes, and I go, Miss <laughs> <laughs> Vincent, she was a cooking teacher. What a biatch. 
Oh, that's not well. Mrs. Contois was cool. She was a cool <laughs> yeah, lady. My Although to shut me up, she got masking tape and wrapped it all <laughs> around my head. And I remember telling my wife that she goes, "Do you?" Under, who was a teacher? She said, "Do you know how much trouble you could get into for doing that nowadays? Not only did you affect your breathing, you've touched a student, you've done all this sort of stuff." I got one for you too. Kindergarten, Miss O'Reilly. I'm walking around the table going, ah! and I remember her looking at me like this. I swear to you, John, could you be human just for once? <laughs> now, I used to build up all those. Remember the, the cardboard bricks? Oh, yeah. And break yeah. them down. And I was, you know, this is the one, the Lufa Regno Hulk. And I was probably going nuts. I can just remember me going around, and she's saying that to me. And I go, oh, okay. Ooh, 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 ooh. Bruce Banner walking off. She probably thought I was the most annoying <laughs> freaking kid. And you know what's funny? People still think of that way. The most annoying, like, what is up? But I will never forget her face. Like, could you be human just for once? And you know what? If I had a pile of those blocks, what would you do right now? You would set them up, knock them over, and go, Savino Smash! Actually, I'd be like, like oh, yeah, I did try. It's always the Lou Ferrigno thing, and then run off into the into an alley. There you go with the ripped up pants. I had them, too. My, my, my tough skins were my tough skins <laughs> were purple, and I used to run, I used to cut them out, and I used to run around the neighborhood without shirt or anything, and I just remember the girls like, John, we're not playing today. Like, and I'd be like, argh, argh, and I just... Can you imagine this loser that's running up and <laughs> up and down the street with his ripped tuskins? And I had to cut because you know, remember the patch on the tuskin yeah. was yep. so tough. So I actually had to cut it. I wanted it down here, but like the patch, the went patch so was right there. Yeah. So I had to go up higher, but I still had to get a piece of the patch. And that that sucker was hard to cut. They had reinforced knees. <laughs> you know why? Because when you wore a full pant, not cut up, you'd fall down in them. <laughs> Genius. I used to. Uh, I used to take my shirts and draw Evil Knievel stripes and stars and bars on my shirts and then jump manholes. <laughs> How about this one? I took my, I took my, my flash underoos and I cut, I cut it right here and I, I colored in the white in, a, in, in red. And I was Doc Samson. <laughs> I was like, I'm not, I'm not Flash. I want to be Doc Samson. I used to do, I would have my Captain America underoos. I'd have the blue. I'd have the red underwear. Which are worth good buy. I had blue, um, uh, blue long johns. So I'd put the red underwear over them. Then I'd have, <laughs> I had red rain boots. I'd put those on. Add a garbage can lid. Oh, I always use the garbage can. <laughs> and, and you know what my mask was? Since I had really bad sinus problems as a kid, I had a blue sinus mask that you would put in the refrigerator, and then you put it on your face, and it would help you out. That was my mask. And I would run around, and I remember one day running through my house, and we had like a metal, a metal gate, not a gate, but a like a. a Sort of an edge, so you wouldn't fall off the stairway when you walk through. <laughs> I remember running through and grabbing a hold of it and yanking it out of the wall. And I'm like, I'm going to get in so much trouble. <laughs> but there you go. That's playing nice superheroes, do. too. Right here, you see this scar right here? Yep. While well, me and my brother playing, trying to hit the door, playing superheroes, went through the window. <laughs> yes. Went through the window. So I was actually injured from superhero play. Did you ever play superheroes in the swimming pool? Oh, of course. And, and Aquaman, Under and as lame as Aquaman was, and yet as Aquaman is the only character that could really hang out in the ocean, nobody wanted to be Aquaman. Uh, but wait, we played under, what we played was underwater Armageddon. That's what we called it. Oh. And I was the Hulk and somebody was Submariner. We would hold our breath. Go all the way under into the deep end, and who could fight the longest? And whoever went up lost that fight. So we'd be like fate fighting them there. That was called underwater Armageddon. I like it. I like it. Oh, uh, okay. So we could just keep going on and on with this. We're getting the light to, to cut. So what we're going to do... We got that like 20 minutes ago, you know. <laughs> but, uh, well, thank you for joining this uh, SWATS cast of getting to know Matt Man and John. Yeah. So uh, watch Matt Man at secretidentitypodcast.com. And watch us at SwassAdventures.com. You know, and uh, check us out. And you'll get these two characters every week. You right? will. Every, every week. week. And us, you get us every month. So, uh, from Keith, Brian, Matt Man, uh, and uh, how good? So good!